Shakespeare's not even close to the first person to ever make reference to the pen as mightier than the sword. That, that sentence certainly didn't come from him, but he did write in Hamlet that many with rapiers are uh, afraid of people with goose quills. And I got it this year, specifically waited to get it this year because of the 400th anniversary. I was a freshman in high school and I got cast as Puck in A Midsummer Night's Dream. So uh, it was uh, a lot about just being accepted into a new crowd um, and uh, the drama club and it's sort of just it was the beginning of my journey in storytelling it was nice to be good at something like that I don't want to take anything away from Shakespeare but I sort of I don't really believe in um, the worship culture of, of Shakespeare yes I'm a big fan like I love him um, but my love for him is not because he's the greatest poet on the planet my love for him is because um, I stumbled ac across him and was accepted by other people in a very fragile moment in my life. Um, and then from there on, he was, he was personally good to me. Like, you know, I, I learned about him and performed him in high school and then uh, was given a scholarship for performing him to college and then got to study overseas by performing him. I got to perform at the in a, like a national competition just out of high school uh, at the Mitzi Newhouse Theater in Lincoln Center because of him. So like I I benefited quite a bit from him, and so he he's forever forever knit to me now because of that. I think Shakespeare would have been a really good artist working in the studio system today, and that has good and bad connotations because. He's not the like artsy fartsy independent filmmaker who's going to just speak the politics of the day and um, preach a, a moral message. And he's certainly not someone that's going to be making only Marvel films his entire career. But we're talking about somebody who wrote things based on what he thought other people wanted. So you can't trust his politics. You can't trust his history because uh, very important people said they needed it a certain way and it got done a certain way. And then when people try to get incredibly highfalutin about his work and his poetry and his art and, and the test of time, and I think you, you learn something else there, which is there's, there's a reason that there's of the, you know, three dozen plays and many poems and hundreds of sonnets that he wrote, that there's seven that get performed regularly. And they're brilliant. But a lot of his work is terribly boring and incredibly overwritten and, and, uh, and, and full of flaws and errors and some, you don't even know who wrote what parts. But that's, that's not an insult. That, what that teaches me is get it out. Just keep working. Make a huge volume uh, because without all the practice of 25 boring bad plays that nobody wants to perform anymore, you have five that will live forever. You have to understand him and you have to be willing to explore. So many people get stuck uh, performing his works either the same way that someone great before them performed it, or the way they think it should be performed, or the weight of Shakespeare, the genius whose works have survived hundreds of years all on their shoulders it really ties them up and doesn't let them be free with it and I and I, and I, I feel like I see people struggle with that all the time and that's why I, I said earlier that I don't feel like anything is benefited by like a, a Shakespeare worship culture because once you only view him as the genius English poet that has never done anything wrong and and uh, is a god then then you're you're done you're you're tied to something that's too big it's too much and um, if you're not willing to see him as a person and as a fellow artist who is doing some of the exact same things that you are doing then you can't collaborate with him and i chose this to sort of hammer home the point that i made about shakespeare knowing what sells and we talk about him as the most wonderful poet of 
English literature. Um, and here he is describing an incredible battle with, with, with the kind of um, fighting that you would see in a movie today, like 300. Like it's, it's brutal, gruesome violence and it's, you know, people are so high flutant about this and, and here we go with some of the grossest fighting you've, you've had described. Uh, and I also love it because I, I'm a writer so, and I write description a lot and I wish I could do it this good. Okay. Doubtful it stood, as two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their art. The merciless MacDonwell, worthy to be a rebel for to the multiplying villainies of nature do swarm upon him, from the western isles of kerns and gallowglasses is supplied, and fortune on his damned quarrel smiling showed like a rebel's whore. But all's too weak. For brave Macbeth, well he deserves that name, disdaining fortune with his brandished steel, which smoked with bloody execution, like valor's minion carved out his passage till he faced the slave, which ne'er shook hands, nor bade farewell to him till he unseamed him from the knave to the chops and fixed his head upon our battlements. Mm -hmm.